Now for our selection methods, to select objects, there are three options. The first is by clicking on the object, okay, and I can click on it and hit escape to deselect it. By dragging open a selection window starting from the left hand side of the object to the right hand side. Okay, or by dragging open a selection window starting from the right hand side of the object to the left hand side. Okay, the difference between option two and option three is that if you start the selection window on the left hand side, only objects that are completely within the selection window will be selected. Starting the selection window from the right hand side selects all the objects that are intersected with the selection window. So on the screen they're displayed differently as well. Selection windows from the left have a solid outline and a blue black background. Selection windows from the right have a dashed outline and a green background. So this is essentially demonstrating the difference between a line and a polyline. Okay? If I have a line okay, and I start from the left hand corner and I go to the right, okay, this is a selection method that anything that what you're selecting has to be fully encompassed within this blue box, okay, or else it doesn't get selected. So if I use that selection tool and I click, you can see that even though the box touched this object and this object, these three were the only ones, four, sorry, were the only ones that are fully encompassed within that blue box, okay? If I do the same thing again and start from the right and go to the left, okay, this is anything that touches the green box will be selected. So now you can see that these two are included in that selection. Okay. If we go to the polyline and we do the same thing, nothing is selected. Because the difference between the polyline and the line is that when we draw a line, it breaks it up into different segments. Whereas the polyline, it keeps it as one complete object. Okay. And then again, all we have to do is select one tiny bit of it and it'll select the whole thing because it's a polyline and it's one continual object. Okay, and again you hit escape to deselect. Now again, deselecting, to deselect an object when selected, um, you can uh, hold down the shift key. So for example, if I have multiple objects that are selected and I don't want to um, use all of them, okay, um, if I hit escape, as mentioned, that deselects all of them. If I want to deselect singular objects, again, I would take my selection and I would hold down the shift key and then I can click to deselect them. Or I can hold down shift and I can use my selection tools. Okay, the one with the green this time. Um, I do as a shortcut because it's anything that touches it, so I don't have to worry about encompassing the whole thing, the whole object. I just have to touch it a little bit with that green selection box, and that deselects something. Okay, the orthogonal function, okay, or the orth ortho function, allows you to constrain your cursor to a 90 degree angle, so making your drawings have true straight lines without guessing. So if that's one of my tool settings down here. Um, and it's my one, two, three, fourth one in. Okay, if I select that and I type in PL for polyline, okay, when I move my cursor, it restrains it or constrains it to a 90 degree angle so that I can only draw like that. Okay, I can also hit F8 and that will toggle the ortho on and off, and that can happen while I'm in a command. So as you can see, I have it off so that I can create lines at different angles, and then if I click and hit the F8 key or click down here while I'm in the command, it'll turn my ortho mode back on. And this is essential to learn because what it does is it ensures that we have nice straight lines without guessing. Now working with specific measurements in AutoCAD, when Entering units in AutoCAD, there's a few options that we can do, and before we get into this, I'm just going to select my objects and hit E for erase, okay, or you can type in erase, or the button is up at the top here. And <coughs> I'm going to start to um, add objects with specific dimensions. So when entering objects in AutoCAD um, in specific, specific units, there again, you know, are a few options of doing that. So the first 
is by doing feet dash inches. Okay, and note again that the dash is important because AutoCAD, you know, our natural inclination is to create a space, but in AutoCAD, spacebar is enter. So that's why we need the dash. The second is to do X feet, X inches, and the dash is actually not necessary. Um, and then if you prefer to work in all inches, you know, for example, 36 inches as opposed to three feet, that also works. So to illustrate that, let's do three feet. Okay, I can either do three uh, foot mark dash zero inches and hit enter and it'll snap it to three feet and then I can hit escape. <coughs> I can again um, either type in L and enter or what I can do is I can hit enter and repeat my last command saving me a step. So again I'm going to specif my, specify my first point and I'm going to do three feet zero inches enter and hit escape or I can type in L for enter or just hit enter to uh, redo my last command, specify my first point, or type in 36 inches and then enter. So you'll see that it gets us, um, you know, to the same place. Now with all options, since inches is actually the default in the unit setup, so if I type in units, you'll see that the default is inches, okay, you do not actually need to specify units only when you're using units other than inches. So for example, in the following the examples above, the same measurements could be added as, again, line three feet dash zero. Okay, because again, it's set to inches, so it's automatically going to understand that if I don't have a unit, it's going to be inches. Okay, so that's why I don't need that inches mark. Um, I can do three, feet zero, okay, and enter to enter or escape to get out of that command, and then I can also do, uh, hit enter to redo my last command, 36, 35, 36, enter, okay, because by default, it's inches. <coughs> when working with fractions, the same formulas apply, so I can have X feet, so let's say um, one foot, one half inch. Okay, I'm gonna type in L again for line. So I can say one foot dash one half inch. Okay, and again, this inch doesn't matter. Okay, because the inches is optional. I'm gonna hit enter. I can do one foot one half, okay, with or without the inches, or um, I could do uh, 13, well, 12.5 inches, sorry, so 12.5 with or without the inches, okay, so as I just did in that last example, uh, I can also work with decimals as well when entering dimensions, so if I have <coughs> Um, point, I have to zoom in for this one, point two five for inches, which is a quarter of an inch. I can have that. I can have point five feet for six inches. Okay, or I could have one point seven five feet for one foot and three quarters inches. Okay, so again, it's this reiteration of there's many, many ways to do something in AutoCAD. It's very redundant and, you know, again, you can, you know, you'll, you'll come up with your own methodology and your own way of using AutoCAD.